I'm John Miglosh for the Wisconsin DMA and the International Society for Strategic Marketing. Nothing but serious news today, and off we go. Okay, a follow-up story. A, a really good story. It turns out that the Jeep commercial was the first commercial that Bill Murray's ever done. At least that's what it said. And the last, he said. And wh what it happened, it, it started about a year earlier where somebody figured out that this Super Bowl was on Groundhog Day, which I kind of lost sight of because we don't pay a lot of attention to that in Wisconsin. We get more winter or we don't. It doesn't seem to correlate very well, although it would be interesting to find out. But as the news pointed out, at our, at our house, it was bright sun, so that means six more weeks. But in Kenosha, it was cloudy, so that means any minute the winter could end. I think it only works in Pennsylvania, where the official Poxitani Phil is. Anyway, so the one of the guys at Jeep and one of the or the guys at the agency at at a, a little agency said, "Bill, do you realize the Super Bowl?" is on Groundhog Day and we could do a reprise and it hasn't been that the case in 50 some years. It's not going to happen again. Who, who knows when it will. I, I mean, who, it could. I don't know. But anyway, the first Super Bowls were in January. I think that's part of why. But uh, they sent him a handwritten note, talk about s snail mail, and handed it to him, to a friend who handed it to Bill, I guess. And for three months, they heard nothing. Uh, that was last fall, and they got a call from Bill in, like, mid-January <laughs> and said, let's do it. This sounds like fun, and uh, so they did. And then they had no spot. They hadn't bought a spot from Fox, so somehow Fox pried him in there. I don't know quite how, but, you know, there's always room for a little more money. And so that's part of the story. You know, that was, like I said, that was my 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 kids favorite but um mine was the snickers and target marketing has a feature on it i want to watch but uh my my argument with it, with it was that this jeep logo the jeep logo was not was not prominent look in the anyway let's move on right let's go over to the pdf okay so we had that where did the pdfs even go here we go <laughs> enough of that and um this was a really interesting article i didn't expect it to be because there's so many ad fraud articles uh but this guy act or the uh, tess this guy this girl i guess uh she sounds like she really knows her stuff and um i apologize tess uh by 2025 wfa says it'll be over a 50 billion dollar waste of ads annually by fraud um, what they're mainly doing, and she points this out, is that they are, they're, they've been using cookies. A lot of fraud leverages the cookie. And so what happens is, is that the bots go to a high, a high value site like ESPN or NPR or something, you know, that's recognized that high income people, uh, Wall Street Journal maybe, that high income people go to. Uh, Harvard Business Review. Anyway, and they and they grab and they and then you know it's a cell phone sitting in an off uh, sitting in a cell phone farm or in a bank of computers, and it picks up the cookie and then it browses around and then it browses to their site that they want to promote. And so the cookie sees that site and says, "Oh, that's a good site. That's got a lot of traffic." That's an oversimplification, but let's say that. Okay. So, but what's happening is really interesting is third parties are going down. See, it says you can build a very attractive profile through cookies by collecting these valuable cookies from luxury car websites, for example, or browsing content that makes you attractive to particular advertisers. Then you go over to the site you want to puff, okay? And the bots are there, and there's engagement, and as we showed you, something like 60% of Procter & Gamble uh, bots were fake. <laughs> I mean, uh, their engagement was fake bots. But now what's happening is Europe is cracking down because of GDPR, right? So the the fraud people are switching to less regulated markets. 
And this is an Australia news source. See, I do international news, which is really interesting. So now, as the third-party cookies contract, um, Tess says the cookie might be replaced with a similar kind of tracking technology or the industry reduces its reliance on audio audience-related data and uses contextual and location-based data as a proxy. Right? Okay, so my ISP, my IP address puts me at a suburb of Milwaukee. Actually, the one I'm using today, my business one, puts me as a suburb of Green Bay, Wisconsin, which is not as attractive. But with my phone and other things, we might be able to figure this, you know, figure out that I'm a suburbanite. Also, we might be able to put ads on like ESPN for the Bucks. And because I watch the Bucks and uh, or the Tottenham Hotspurs, you know, and, and only get people that, that 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 root for those or or Brewers, Bucks and Packers, you know, and you get Wisconsinites. Um, so it's possible to do this without bots, but it's uh, without cookies, but it's it's getting harder. And now they're moving to what's called an ID fingerprint. And it's a combination of, say, your MAC address on your cell your operating system and your IP address and those three things are not repeated ever right so they know I have an Android they know I have what operating system level so I know they know if I have a, a new one or an old one this is the kind of thing they can use to target anyway um, so Tess says if they go to that if they call if they go to the fingerprinting bot herders and malware creators will leverage whatever that new piece of technology is that's used to identify individuals. See, if they fingerprint a phone, and then the phone goes to the high leverage sites, the same problem will happen. Same fraud will happen. Very profound. Good job, Tess. So the answer really is to figure out better ways to advertise. And of course, mail is the key to that. Okay, now I'm going to... I'm going to actually pause for a minute here. I'm going to split this one in. And where I'm going is I had a great time. Uh, I had lunch with Ben Askren, and he was explaining yesterday, and he was explaining some things about crypto technology and about some alternatives to YouTube. And it was, it was very enlightening. So long term for monetization, I, I want to put my best content someplace other than freebie stuff because, you know, I'd love to do this long term, and I'd love to have your support on it. Um, but <laughs> right now, it doesn't do me any good, far, as far as I can tell whatsoever. Although I did get an, I did get a message. You're welcome. I did get a message from someone on LinkedIn the other day, and they said one of my videos was sent to them, and they needed to get in touch with me. I don't know why. I did get a hundred and forty thousand dollar client that way back a few years ago from one of my YouTube videos. So if people ask, does this ever pay off? Well, you know, one $140,000 client that came directly as a result of one video, eh, kind of, it kind of works out. 